Guys, what's up? How's it going? It's John. And first and foremost, I want to thank you for checking this video out, subscribing, turning on the notifications, all that good stuff. This video, I want to take a closer look at a new console by Collector Vision Games. It's called the Collector Vision Phoenix. I'll explain a little bit later on why it's called the Phoenix. Uh, and there's two different versions. There's the standard edition, and then there's the limited edition, which is kind of based on the classic Atom computer uh, by Coleco Vision. And what this is, is an FPGA, the Field Programmable Gate Array, uh, system. For those who don't know what FPGA is, it basically allows uh, the hardware to, to read the, the system play just like the original hardware, uh, but in this case, better, right? It's an HD. Uh, so it's not it's not emulation or anything like that. It's, uh, it also, there's different cores, so it's open source. You can be able to program. There'll, there'll be other uh, systems available. So currently, you can play ColecoVision games, obviously. Uh, there's also a core that's going to be built into it that can play Atari 2600 games. I'll show how that works here later in the video. Uh, it does come with a packing game, Sydney Hunter and the Cabin's Death, which we'll take a closer look at here in a second. Uh, the system itself, very small. It, it's got uh, a nice uh, clamshell, uh, pretty sturdy. You've got uh, power reset. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. Also has an option. You can pick up uh, a Super Nintendo controller. And what you're thinking, Super Nintendo controller, that's kind of weird. Uh, well, uh, it does have an adapter on the side where you can actually play uh, the, with a Super Nintendo controller. Uh, the reason why you'd want to play with a Super Nintendo controller opposed to the standard ColecoVision controller is simple because, frankly, I'm not a huge fan of this controller. A lot of people aren't. Uh, you can obviously still play with a ColecoVision controller, but uh, a lot of people may prefer playing with a Super Nintendo controller. So that uh, so controllers usually aren't included. It doesn't come with a ColecoVision controller. Uh, however, you can purchase a Super Nintendo controller for, for fairly cheap. Uh, and that's that you can get that packed in as well. So it comes with the game, which is about a fifty to sixty dollars value. It has um, a super game module, which for those who don't know, it's an expansion that came out, I believe, back in two thousand twelve for the ColecoVision. It expands the RAM to to 30, 32 kilobytes of RAM, opposed to one kilobyte of RAM. So the games look better, they play better, uh, a little bit more memory, all that good stuff, right? Um, also comes with the ability to play F eighteen A games. It's a chip that enhances the graphics, uh, both. Uh, just color palette wise, it looks almost more like a, a Nintendo and entertainment system graphically. Uh, that alone is about an $86 value. Uh, the Super Game Module alone goes for about $90. Uh, the game alone, as I mentioned before, is $50 to $60. Uh, system itself, the standard unit, is $200. Uh, so it was a, we did a kind of a small run initially. Uh, we shipped out to the early access backers first. We didn't do Kickstarter, uh, we, we did early access. We appreciate everyone's support. It is being shipped to early access as we speak, and in about a month or so, two months down the road, we plan on shipping out to everyone else who's pre-ordered it. So we're super excited. Uh, we're, we're a small company. We're not like, we don't have a major funding behind behind us to do this. This is a, a project for us that's just a, uh, because we love Clico. And, and really there is no markup in the system, to be quite honest. We're not making any money really markup wise on this unit. Uh, we're selling it pretty much at our cost. Uh, what we want to do is ex extend uh, Clico uh, people Clico to other people who've never played the ColecoVision. It's a great console. It's one of my favorites. It's my first system I've ever played growing up as a kid. We also are planning on making games exclusively for the Phoenix. Uh, the reason it's called Phoenix is because, A, uh, I live in the Phoenix area. I'm part of the team, so that's one reason. But also, it, you know, the Phoenix is, rises from the ashes. So we're essentially taking the system kind of from the dead and bring it back to life. So it's, it's kind of fitting in two ways. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you, took, let's take a closer look at each console itself directly. We'll, we'll show you what's included. And then, of course, I'll show you some gameplay and show you the interface, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. You can also reach out to us on our website, collectorvision.com. Uh, appreciate you guys watching, and let's take a closer look. Okay, so the first version I want to show you is the standard version. This is retails for $199. Uh, it does come with an SD card that has 11 built-in original games that we've created over the years. It does come with Sydney Hunter and the Caverns of Death, as I explained before, and we'll take a closer look here in a second. Um, so it does come with more than just a system. It also comes, obviously, with an AC adapter. Uh, it is region-free. Uh, play games anywhere in the world. It also will work on any system uh, in the world, uh, whether it's PAL region or NTSC, etc. So it does, here's where the SD card slot would go. I got a nice logo here. Here's the two uh, controller ports, the 9-pin controller ports. It does have a keyboard expansion uh, in case we decide to, to add that feature later on, which is nice. So it's got some expandability. On the side here is where the Super Nintendo controller has one port. Uh, there's a way you can map the systems. So for example, left and A is, what is like, you know, number one, whatever. So there's, it kind of explains the instructions how to do that. The back, we do have an expansion here in case we decide to add more expansion to it. So that's an option there. Uh, here's the HDMI. It does output at 
uh, 480p currently, not 720. However, we we're looking into making it 720. It still looks great. Uh, you know, when we're talking about games at the scale and these, these old school games anyway, there really isn't much of a big difference between 480 and 720, but it still looks great for 480. Here's where the power go into. In the bottom, you got a nice little serial number. This is number 200. Okay, they're all uh, uniquely numbered. All right, made in Canada. Our team's up in Montreal. My friend Toby, poor guy, has been putting these together by hand, uh, which is uh, crazy uh, to think about. So <laughs> it takes him a, a long time. So here, here's a look at uh, the Atom. This is a special edition 250. This is more limited edition. Uh, the Atom was a computer that came out after the ColecoVision. Uh, to, the reason the rumors I heard that they called it the Atom back in the back in the day was because Atom took a bite of the Apple, and Adam, Apple was a big, obviously still around, but they were huge back then too, uh, with the Apple II computers. Uh, it basically, the Atom killed the the, the Clico as a company. This is what the SD card looks like. Okay, it's got the Phoenix logo. Same thing. You got also the logo here. Nice little uh, sticker there. And you're at power. You also have a reset. So you kind of look like mini controllers, like the old uh, ColecoVision console. So pretty sturdy. Bottom here. You see, this is number three, serial number three. Okay. Got nice little rubber pads here on the bottom. Good build quality is good. All right, pretty good. Here is a closer look at Sydney Hunter and the Caverns Duff game. Let's open it up. We also did a Super Nintendo port. And this is what the Super Nintendo box art looks like. You can kind of compare the two. This is Super Nintendo 16-bit, opposed to, you know, less than 8-bit, right? <laughs> uh, here's a cartridge. We have our own, uh, uh, we have our own cartridge mold, so these are original. We don't take recycled games at all. And then let me show you the instruction manual. Here's the instruction manual. Nice full colored enemies, bosses, credits. Oh, there I am right there. Boom. Okay, that's cool. Put that in like so. Here's, I wanted to show you a prototype. This is one I've had for a while. This is the original prototype of the Phoenix. This is 3D printed. You can tell because it's got kind of rough here. But you can see from the prototype to the original release, uh, subtle differences, but you know, for the most part, the, the you know, it's pretty much the same design, right? So you get the prototype here, and then this is what the final release. So that's cool to have uh, to own the prototype in my collection. And I want to show you the owner's manual. This is the owner manual for the Phoenix. Made to look old school, of course. This is how ColecoVision did it back in the day with the blue and black and gray. You know, it comes with HDMI, game cart, power adapter, SD card. Vince, shout out to him for putting this together. Very old school. How to start, get the LED light, which I'll show you in a second. These are the games that are included. Troubleshooting. These are the backers that backed it through our website. We didn't do Kickstarter, but this is through our website. Those names are on here, okay? Limited warranty. This is a packing game, and this is you know, more instructions on the game itself, even though I just showed you. So, um, without any further ado, let's take a closer look actually uh, at this thing booting up and go from there. So before I show you some gameplay and turn this thing on, I, I realize I, I want to open this up and show you guys the board, because I know someone's going to make a smart remark about the Coleco Chameleon and how that obviously was a scam. Uh, and uh, yes, I got burned from it. I think we all, a lot of us got burned from it, but this thing is legit. Let me just show you the board. Okay, and then this is the top. This is what the tray looks like. Okay, and this actually opens up springs, right? And this is the, the buttons here, okay? So, you can see, let me just take a closer look. That's where the SD card goes into, okay? Let's turn, turn this bad boy on. Uh, so guys, what I'm gonna do in this video, instead of doing a direct feed, I'm gonna do no funny business. I'm gonna do simply show you this, no editing, show you this turn on, show you the TV, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna plug in City Hunter and the Caverns of Death, which is the packing game that comes with it. We'll go ahead and plug it on in. We're gonna power it up. Light turns on. Let's see if we can line this up okay. Best I can anyway. Uh, so this game's been ported to uh, several systems, this game, uh, Super Nintendo, uh, 
work on an NES port. Um, it's, uh, it's a fun game. This is the third one in the City Hunter series. The first one is Sacred Tribe, which I'll show you here in a second. Uh, we also have City Hunter and the Curse of the Mine, which is coming out for modern platforms here very shortly. I can't seem to line this up very well. So I apologize for moving the camera. Okay, that's all right. Uh, I'm going to put a kind of a uh, mini picture here in the corner, show you the Super Nintendo port, show you just graphically the difference between this and the Super Nintendo. But surprisingly, the ColecoVision port uh, is really decent. Uh, I almost prefer the ColecoVision port, although both are uh, both are really fun. The music is different, uh, opposed to this one, Super Nintendo one. Different, different music. Now I can either, either use my Super Nintendo controller or I can use uh, ColecoVision controller. Either way, I actually prefer the Super Nintendo controller. I don't like the joystick on the ColecoVision one. I could, of course, skip this, but it's an interesting uh, intro. Okay, start it. I'll show you the first level. There's ten levels in this game. The goal is to really escape each cavern by collecting various items. It's like a puzzle platformer. Have a boomerang as a weapon. That water will kill you, so you be careful. There's no fall damage, obviously. They'll just give you points. Oh. Ah. I'm not doing so hot in this, in this game. <laughs> the bats fly a little differently in each port. Now the lava is going to start rising once you get the item. So now I got to find out where to put this this item here. Ah. This one's very short level, obviously. They progressively get longer and longer. So I'm going to turn it off. Take out the car the cartridge. Um, collector vision. Also, we have our own cartridge mold for ColecoVision. So these are original cartridges. I'm gonna just have the SD card in there and turn it on. Quick reset. Okay, so it comes with eleven games built in. Uh, I'll show you a few of them. Don't wanna go over all of them, but we'll go through a few. Here's the original Sacred Tribe. This is the one, first one in the series, City Hunter. Same programmer as before. So different intro. I really like the Commodore 64 port of this, as well as uh, the Sega Master System port, which I just reviewed recently, is really good to this as well. Let's we'll skip this. Okay, let's get started. This one, you don't have a boomerang. You just, uh, goal is to collect diamonds and, and try to ex escape, essentially. There's over 100 screens. This game is hard. I've not been able to beat it. There you go. And this will make you invincible for a while. Oh, you guys get the idea. Okay, I'm gonna re reset it. Let's show you another game. Uh, Likerd, Likerd Race, and this is a fun kind of mini game in uh, Tron, the original Tron. And all these games are, are included, so Comes with 11 games plus the cart if you decide to get the cartridge, which is exclusive. It's another conference of death and exclusive. So, 
Goal is to uh, get him to hit my line, avoid his line. I can speed up. I think I got him. No, we need to go the other way. Ah, uh... oh, he got me. Okay, we're going to reset it. Uh, let's see, Princess Quest is like uh, Ghosts and Goblins. It plays differently, but similar. Uh, I like Spunky. This is a fun game. Different difficulties. So there's a bunch of mini games in here. It's fun. So you're supposed to uh, smash all the tombstones. And avoid the skulls, obviously. Didn't do a very good job there. Ah, it's hard. This is on easy mode. <laughs> Get more points and more tombstones you crash into. Here's the next stage. Oh, go off the cliff here, watch. Boom. Under the sea. Oh, I guess I'm not supposed to hit the mermaids. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a while since I've played that game. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show you kind of, uh, this is a Sega ma uh, Super Module game. This is called Mega 8, so let me plug this in. Uh, Super Game Module is built into this system. Normally if you have a ClecoVision you have to give you a separate attachment. Uh, all the stuff is here. So this is what the cartridge looks like. It's hard to see with the light, but plug it in. Just want to show you that it does work. This game will not work on a normal ClecoVision console. But it will work here. And there it boots up. You can see the graphically it's a uh, Music-wise, it's enhanced. Graphically, it's a little enhanced as well. Okay. The shooter. Really fun shooter. Kind of anime theme to it behind it as well. But yeah, I just want to show you that that, that that does work, no problem. A little bit louder if you notice that, that the audio went up a little bit. Um, I want to show you another game as well, which is pretty cool. Um, this One thing that this system can do, as I mentioned before, is it has the ability to uh, F18A enhance. And this is a game, Pink Mission. I want to show you the difference uh, with normal and then this enhancement. You can see we're going to make more games with this type of chip and this ability. Pardon me. Sometimes it's, sometimes you have to reset it. Um, so let's go normal. I'm going to show you what it looks like normally on a normal ColecoVision hardware. So I can do, uh, let's do three sergeant. So you can kind of see, this is what it looks like normally on a ColecoVision. Not quite sure what uh, fire is, so pardon me, I'm not really hitting the right buttons here, but the dogs are getting me. Are you gonna get me? Ah, no! Anyway, that's what it looks like normally on a normal. Let me reset it. Now I'm gonna do the enhance. This is more like NES style. You'll see. It's a huge difference. You can already see the color brightness is a lot better. Look at that. 
huge difference. We'll be making more games that will have this enhancement. So, games that we're going to be porting for the NES, for example, will be coming out for the Phoenix. Okay. Again, I don't know the controls here, so I apologize. I'm Dogs are eating me alive here, literally. Uh, I'll show you another example. This is normal. Tank here. So that's normal. Let's uh, reset it and show you the F eighteen A. It'd be a huge, huge improvement here. Look at that color difference. So musically, it's about the same, but yeah, you can see graphically, it's much improved. And that's one cool, unique thing about the Phoenix. So you're wondering, why would I get the Phoenix out of ColecoVision? Well, this is one of the reasons why you probably want to get it, because you can play games like this <laughs> uh, on hand. So it's pretty sweet. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, I'll take the cartridge out. This does play Atari 2600 games. I'll show you how you can access that. You turn on, hit the star button in the corner there, right away. Okay, so when you hit that star button here, you get to this menu here, and there's different cores. So you got, right now it's got ColecoVision core and Atari 2600 core. Uh, we'll add more cores later. It's going to be open source, so people can add more cores later as well. I'll hit 2 to show you Atari 2600. Can reset, and then right here, you can see here, I can load ROM. And I've got one game in here, ET, I'm going to show you it working. So this will play Atari 2600 games. Oh, it's really loud. Very loud. All right. This is one of the worst games ever. But I just wanted to show you that it's still kind of a work in progress, so not all the games will work right now at this point, but certainly a work in progress. So you got to bear with us. Uh, this game is broken anyway, so it's not the core causing this. It's not, emula it's not emulation, it's not the core doing this, but anyway, uh, you guys can get the idea. So, ah, this game's so frustrating. That's just how your game goes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll put a link below to Collect Your Vision Games. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for liking this video and commenting and subscribing. That means a lot. We'll see you guys soon. Take care, and of course, game on.